Hi guys, I'm the Spotty Zebra, and today I'm doing the Beatles cover guide, part 2. Sergeant Pepper's To Let It Be. If you haven't seen episode 1, go check it out and then come straight back. So, let's start with their 8th studio album, Sgt. Peppers. The cover was designed by pop artists Peter Blake and Jan Hawthorne from a drawing by Paul. It features the band dressed as Sgt. Peppers' Lonely Hearts Club band surrounded by cardboard cutouts of famous people. The cover features 57 photographs and 9 waxworks. The average cost to create an album cover at the time was £50, but this album cost £3,000. That's $4,600. George requested his gurus and Ringo wasn't bothered. However, more controversially, John requested Jesus and Hitler. However, they were removed as it was feared they might offend people. This was quite soon after the We're Bigger Than Jesus incident. This is one of the most iconic Beatles covers and it has been parodied hundreds of times. This was the first rock album cover to include the lyrics to all of the songs on the back. The next album was the soundtrack to Magical Mystery Tour. The cover featured the Beatles in costumes. One is dressed as a walrus, however it is unknown who this is. John addresses it in the song Glass Onion by saying, Well here's another clue for you all, the walrus was Paul. However some say it is John in the costume, as he sings I am the walrus. Their ninth studio album was self entitled but dubbed the White Album because of its plain white cover. Well, what can I say about it? Well, the back has pictures of the Beatles in black and white. What else? It was designed by pop artist Richard Hamilton and is the only cover not to feature the members of the band on the front. Paul requested the cover to be as stark as possible to contrast the bright and colourful look of Sgt Pepper's. The next album was Yellow Submarine and was the soundtrack to the animated film. The cover contained a newly drawn picture of the Beatles not used in the posters for the film. The UK version contained the words, Nothing is Real, taken from the song, Strawberry Fields Forever. The voices of the Beatles in the film were played by actors. Their second to last album cover, Abbey Road, has an even more iconic cover than Sgt Pepper's. It is the only Beatles album that does not feature the name of the band or the album on the cover. It was created by the creative designer of Apple Records, John Kosh. He said the Beatles were the most famous band in the world and didn't need their name on the cover. The cover shows the Beatles walking across a zebra crossing outside Abbey Road Studios in London. The photographer was given 10 minutes to take the photo while a policeman held up the traffic. This cover has also been parodied many times. The crossing has grade 2 listed status for cultural and historical importance. This cover also sparked the Paul is Dead theory that Paul McCartney died in 1966 and was replaced with a look-alike. The most famous clue is that he is not wearing any shoes on Abbey Road. There are clues on all of the albums I'm talking about in this episode. If you're interested, The Album Man did a really good video on this. I'll leave a link in the description. We're nearing the end of this video, but we just have time to look at the Beatles' final album, Let It Be. This cover contains four panels, each containing a member of the band. This format is now popular with many bands and has been done by The Gorillas, The Black Eyed Peas and Blur to name a few. That's it for this video, please like and sub. See you next time when I'll talk about Death Note. Death Note.